Okay, on this uh, first sort of major assignment in GIMP, I'm going to show you how to remove the background image uh, so you can keep a certain item on the screen or on your, your image. Uh, it would be a shorter video if I just bang showed you how to do it, but I'm going to also show you how to use some other selection tools because um, you're new to GIMP. If you're looking for the Photoshop version of this tutorial, you'll find it on the, uh, on the course page as well. So here's the scenario, and you're going to do the very same thing. Uh, you're going to submit the file of, uh, in this case it'll be an airplane, with the background removed. So in order to start the tutorial, You've downloaded the image of the plane. I don't know where you downloaded it to, but find it. In my case, I made it easy. I saved it on the C drive and in a folder called Photos. And here's the bomber. Now, when you open up an image in GIMP, you'll notice you'll get some information here. And you'll get a preview of it over here. So I'm just going to double click, or I could click open, it doesn't matter. And there it is. Now, if it opens up, any image opens up, and it, you don't see it all on the screen, what you can do is you can mess around with the um, view. In this case, we can go to view and zoom. And right now you'll see it's zoomed at 50%, but you could fit the image in a window. Now it doesn't change anything here, but if you use that file, or sorry, view, zoom, and fit image in a window, that will uh, that will adjust things so that you can see everything. You can also zoom in and zoom out. You'll notice that you have the plus and minus button. So on the keyboard, if I hit the plus button or the minus buttons, I'm zooming in and out. You're also going to see that you can play with the zoom down here, the bottom of your screen. And there's also another way that you can kind of zoom using kind of a slider. We won't use that now, but it's, it's, it's in its own window. All right, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see the whole image. That looks about right at 50%. And now we're going to take a look at your toolbox of tools. You'll notice that the first few tools at the top here have to do with selection. We have a rectangle select tool, we have a, an ellipse select tool, we have a free select tool, and we have something called the fuzzy select tool. And then there's some other ones, but we're going to concentrate on these, well, these four to begin with. And there's a scissor select tool. In there. Anyways, there's a bunch of them. But let's start with something simple. Now, if I wanted to get rid of the background of an image, um, and so the idea would be to pay, take the plane, maybe, and put it on a background of the Himalayas or something. Well, in this case, what would happen is I have to cut the plane out, but everything else would have to be transparent. It cannot be white. Now, I'm not going to show you exactly what I mean by this, but I'm going to use the Rectangle Select tool. I'm going to click and drag and draw myself a rectangle. I want you to also notice that as you're clicking and dragging, if you really want a perfect square, hold your shift key down and notice that I've got a square instead of a rectangle. Okay, perfect square. To get rid of this, I could edit cut, but I'm just going to hit delete on my keyboard. <laughs> and it didn't work. That's because it was unselected and GIMP froze on me. Isn't that great? It doesn't usually freeze. Don't worry about that. Oh, there we go. It froze, but all right. It's because I have so many other things open on my computer. You can only see one of my many screens. All right. So I cut part of that background out and notice that it's white. So what's happening here is if I did, if I pasted this on top of the Himalayas image, I'd also see these white squares, which is not what I want. But I'm showing you how to cut. So let's just continue doing this. 
we have the ellipse select tool and I'd like you to try that. Notice that I get an oval but the same thing that I did a while ago with the square if I hold my shift key down and I want a perfect circle right I hold the shift key down I'm still holding it and I'm gonna hit delete and I get a perfect circle okay now we're gonna talk about making this so that the background is transparent what we have here hopefully you're not confused yet but we have two of these windows here this one's called brushes and layers only because brushes and layers are combined in the same window okay we're gonna work with layers and you'll notice that we only have one layer and it happens to be a picture of the plane I'm gonna widen this up sometimes we can see a little bit more now I could name this layer anything if I double click on it right because I might be working with a bunch of different layers but and what we're gonna do in this case is to make things simple and by the way see that little eye show the layer hide the layer show the layer hide the layer we're going to add an alpha selection here so an alpha selection means that we're going to add a transparent layer we won't see it in the list but we'll make it so that uh, when we delete items instead of getting those white boxes we'll get these checkers so I'm adding an alpha channel like I say that's kind of like adding an extra layer to this um, to this image just a second I have to re and I am back okay not that you noticed okay now watch what I ha what happens when I say I do a selection of a square I get the transparency this is what I want and this is what you're going to want pretty much any time almost any time that you are working with an image make sure that you right click on the layer and add the alpha channel this will start making a lot more sense to you when you gain experience so wouldn't this be a long process to get rid of everything except for the plane if I was using uh, squares and rectangles right so a tool that you're going to use or a function that you're going to lose, use a lot is the undo key so I'm going to undo a whole bunch of this stuff and that's by holding control Z hold clicking on it a bunch of times I'm getting rid of everything you could do that too if you like but I'm kind of going back to my original image a faster way to be honest with you would have been to close it and open it up again there's the plane and by the way that's my buddy in the plane they uh, his buddy was taking a picture the resolution of the image isn't great it was taken with a phone but uh, they're the guys that put forest fires out in New Brunswick anyways we're gonna cut the plane out so we use the rectangle select tool we use this the ellipse select tool to see how that works now we're going to use something called the free select tool keep in mind I might have lost my alpha channel yes I did so right click add it again now we're going to use the free select tool and watch what happens I'm going to do it a little bit rough okay I'm clicking 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 you notice those little dots those circles that are happening here and I go back to the original one and I double click now I'm going to hit enter on the keyboard and watch what happens when I hit delete there goes the plane but whoops it's the plane I want to keep so I'm going to undo and in this case I'm going to what we call invert the selection I'm going to make it so that everything is selected except for the plane and in this case I will go to select I will go to invert you'll notice that when you get good at this you have all these control keys that you can memorize so invert and watch what happens now when I hit delete perfect perfect that's what I want okay now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to be a little more precise with this so let's get rid of the selections that we have so far we're gonna to go to select none okay and by the way go back in this tutorial if you missed a step go back start it from scratch if you do this a few times you're going to be an expert all right so let's zoom in some more this time we're going to make it so that 
we're going to select a little more closely. So let's start with like here, here. And by the way, there are still better ways of doing this, but I want you to learn this first. So I'm selecting closer to the plane. This is good. Uh, we'll keep the wheel there. This is good. Not too bad. I went a little close to the wing there. And at the very end, you connect it back to where you start it. What do you do? You hit enter. There we go. What happens if I hit delete now? It gets rid of the plane. So reverse your selection, invert it, hit delete, and we're getting even closer. Let's learn something new now. Let's select none. This is what we have left for a plane. So we could basically paste this on top of another layer and we would see the rest of the, you know, the picture of the other layer behind it, but we'd see the plane, but we'd see that it's, you know, we'd still, we'd still see that it's like cutting it out of a picture by hand and pasting it with glue. It's not great, but it's better than it was. So one thing that you can do, and again, you're going to learn how to do this better over time, but let's use the eraser tool. All right, let's use this eraser tool. You'll find it right about here. Now, when you widen this, you'll notice that everything lines up a little bit differently, but you'll find the eraser tool. Now, the eraser tool, the way it works, is that if I start erasing something, you'll notice that it's going to be doing it with brushes. And right now, the brush that we have, if I click on it here, It says the opacity, the opacity, opacity is uh, 100, the brush is 0.50, so it's, it's sort of a soft brush, it's not a hard brush. This would be a hard brush over here. You see it here, hardness is 100. When I erase something, it erases it pretty hard. But if I use this eraser, watch what happens when it, whoops, erase the plane. So that's a problem. But it's going to be really hard to be precise with this. So I'm going to undo, zoom in on the plane. I'm going to go up to like 150%. That's pretty good. I can work with different sizes of the brush, right? Now, this will make it a little bit hard to be precise as well. I'm getting close, and I don't need to, you know, erase anything or undo anything yet, but let's change the size of the brush. Let's make it so that the brush is smaller so we can change it. Let's say right now it's 50 in size. I'm going to change it to 25 by typing it in over here. All right, see how it's smaller than it was? Also what I can do is maybe I'll go to a softer hardness. So I clicked here instead of going all the way over here. And it gives me the same thing. Let's go to something like the hardness again. Let's go to 50, like half, half the hardness. And again, let's change the size to 25. And how do I know 25? That's just a random number I'm picking that I figure might work. So notice that when you're erasing, it's a little bit hard to see. But it's taking more strokes of the eraser to erase the edges. I'm getting pretty close now. This is pretty good. Notice what I'm doing here? This is working out pretty good. But I'm going to have to zoom even closer to get, and I'll get rid of this bottom thing here. We don't need that. But I might have to get even closer if I want to do a really, really good job. So for now, I'm going to come close but not too, too close, right? And by the way, if you let your mouse key go and then you start again and you let your mouse key go and you start again, this will prevent you from having to undo something. So let's say next time I go like this and whoops, I'm going to undo it, but it only undoes the last little bit. So that's why I'm kind of 
clicking and dragging and then letting it go, clicking and dragging, letting it go. Okay. And by the way, this still isn't the best way to do this. But it's all something that it, these are all techniques that you need to learn so that when you learn the faster ways of doing things, you'll still have to do a little bit of this to get exactly what you want. So now I'm taking, you're still watching the video. You could be doing this too. All right, so I'm going close. You might want to speed things up and see what I'm going to do when I'm done. But I'm doing pretty good, doing pretty good. You'd think you could draw straight lines, and sure you can. There are ways of doing that, but I'm doing pretty good. Right, so I'm getting too close here. Getting too close. Notice that I've got some blue here that I need to get rid of. So I'm going to get. The... But again, now what am I going to do to get closer to the plane? Same thing. I'm going to zoom in some more. Well, let's zoom into like 400. All right. So now, see how that brush is still. Now it's pretty big because I'm zoomed right in. So I might have to bring that down some. Maybe I'll bring it down to like 12. Or 10 or something and I'm getting closer and closer to the plane I had a little bit of white up here that I want to get rid of but now I'm getting really really good okay go ahead and advance the video a little bit but you should be doing this I'm getting pretty close maybe I'll get rid of like sort of that white that's there and I'll get even closer all right I'm gonna pause the video and I'll bring you back into it when it's uh, when I'm ready okay I'm back just about done now this is what you're going to want to do with the plane is to make sure that you got rid of everything else I may have not done it perfectly if I zoom in real close you'll notice that there's still some white down here that I could have you know maybe I'll get rid of this little you can tell that there's a little bit of color there I could have done the same thing with that could Right, I could do it like that. I could use my eraser tool even closer. You can zoom in pretty close. You can zoom into like 1600. Oops. All right, <laughs> to 35,000. So if you really, really want it to be perfect, you could zoom in really close and get rid of these pixels here, because that's what an image is made of, pixels. All right, but if you go too close, it's going to look too fake too. So I'm gonna zoom out some more. You see I have some blue at the bottom of the wheels. I should have gotten rid of that if I wanted to make it perfect. But you get the idea. Now, the first thing you're going to want to, what you should have been doing all along, by the way, is saving this. So that if you made a mess at the very end after you spent 15, 20 minutes working on this, uh, you could go back to a saved copy. So I'm going to save it in that same folder. Notice that... A GIMP image is saved as XCF. XCF. XCF is only good for working with GIMP. If it's something that you're going to want to share with somebody else later, like in uh, Facebook or Instagram or whatever, you've got to then convert it to a JPEG or a PNG or a GIF or whatever, some image type file. But I will be requiring that you submit to me XCF files and often PNG files or JPEGs. Um, read the assignment, the assignment instructions uh, to know what I'm looking for. So I'm going to save this. So now I have it. And this is what I want you to submit to me is the plane with the background removed. And then you're going to do your own in the next assignment. So for now, uh, for this particular assignment, I'd like you to submit to me the XCF file. I'll take a look at it and I will grade you based on how accurate you were. Okay? If there's a wing missing, you're not going to get too many points. All right? If there's a wheel missing, you're going to lose some points. So you need to, uh, you're going to, to develop this skill. 
and then you'll see why we got rid of the background and how this would look. Okay, so good luck with this, and if you figure this thing out, you're doing okay in GIMP, really.